Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. No, there we have John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, okay. Feeling any better? I mean, I know you're tired. A little we're bit. Talking, we're talking a little about bit that. better. I've had an up and down day, so. Yeah, I, I know that most of our, our, our folks here know that you guys weren't feeling that good. I know your wife's feeling a lot better. Thank you guys for all the well wishes, prayers. And yes, prayers. thank Even you. Even if you didn't say nothing and you just thought it, you know, but thinking it's enough. You know, you just put it into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So thanks everybody for that. Um, also would like to thank our sponsor, Hockey Locker. Uh, you can find them at 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 404-800-7585. Our um, or you can call them at 414-800-7585. Wait, yeah, 414-800-7585. Or their phone number, sorry. Their website is hockeylockermilwaukee.com. See, I make mistakes. We were just talking about mistakes during our pre show. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny. We were talking about it, and I'm still over here screwing up the intro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, like we said, we own it, make fun of ourselves, and move on. <laughs> yeah. Um, hope you guys like the new set. I tried to go as well as I could to like the state of Tennessee because, you know, Wisconsin sure as heck wouldn't have worked up there with the 50 foot lighting. So, hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, tomorrow we'll be coming back with another color uh, as the Admirals take on the moose of uh, the moose of Manitoba. <laughs> you know. um, but today the Preds took on Colorado. These two teams. <laughs> are vying for the best spot, the top spot in the division. Not only that, but they won, they're, they're some of the, right now they're in the top of the league. All right. Both of them, you know, they're, they're clamoring for the top of the league. They're clamoring for the best spot in the division. They're battling and it was definitely a, a battle. Right. So, um, there were some frustrating moments on both sides. Um, you know, uh, Boro getting hurt for us, not fun because we have enough problems, uh, with, with COVID and, you know, stuff like that. But the, I, I wanted to get into that situation before we even did the video so that we could actually enjoy talking about the game because, right. you know, um, when Colorado's player got hurt and wasn't down very long. They still blew the whistle. Right. Really quickly. But Boro got hurt. And it was about 10, 15 seconds before the whistle got blown. And they yep. scored. Right. So what part of the makes it right? You got to do the same for everybody. You got to treat if you're a referee, you got to treat everyone equally. Right. You know? And, 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 you know, you take a puck to the spine. What if he's laying there paralyzed and, and gets hit in the head with a puck because he can't move? Right. Well, you know, there's a lot of risks in that. And that's the first thing that comes to my mind is blow the whistle, blow the whistle, blow the whistle, blow the whistle, blow the whistle. The guy's hurt. Blow the whistle. I wouldn't have cared whose team he was on. Right. You know, blow the dang whistle because I don't want to see nobody die in this game. We've already had that. By the way, our thoughts and prayers are with the young kid who died from a, a skate cut um, to the neck. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him. Uh, I can't remember the name. I really, he was a high school student, um, you know, really young and, and it's a tragedy. Um, I remember watching videos as, as, a, as a goalie, um, you know, on what not to do, how to hold your neck, because, you know, um, uh, one of the Sabres goalies back in the uh, late 80s took one right to the jugular, cut carotid artery right in your neck, and he's lucky to be still here. And matter of right. fact, played, the, played, I think, the last 10 games of that season as well. So, I mean, that was back when, you know, born tough hockey players, but, you know, right. uh, we also didn't have the medical and, and the knowledge of, the, of some of the stuff that we have now. You know, uh, some injuries, guys come back quicker now, and other injuries, guys take longer because they know if they don't, that shortens their career. Right. Um, so that's one of the things I was really worried about because of where that puck hit. You know, right in the spine, right in the lower spine, 
you know, that's that's a risky injury uh, to what we know. He is still being evaluated by um, Nashville staff and, and local medical. Um, I'm hoping he will be all right. Uh, Boros tough, so he will be back. <laughs> Boros definitely tough. Yeah. Um, um, you know, Boros one of the toughest guys on our team. Um, other thing I wanted to say is, is, is something that we're going to be starting to put out there is Jano for Calder because, man, <laughs> that kid can play. Mm. Yeah. Jano for Calder because if you really look at it, Jano's leading in point hits. Or sorry, goals, hits, penalty minutes, fighting majors. Yeah, you're you got a complete all around hockey player right here. Right. And 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 that's and he'll play for. You can put him on any line, and he'll find a way to be successful. Right. And and that's one of the really big things uh, for him, and and one of the big things I'm really happy for him about. Um. Uh, another thing I wanted to add in, uh, Matt Duchesne um, went 100% on faceoffs, and uh, oh, who did it for the Avalanche? Uh, Maltese, Maltsev, Maltsev uh, went 100% on the faceoff. Uh, both of them only took one faceoff, but both of them went 100 and won, they both won it. So, right. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, so scoring in the uh, shots were uh, 44 to 32. Fifth straight game, or you know, was it fifth or fourth? Fourth straight fourth. game. Fourth straight game, Saros has played, faced 40 plus shots. And one. Right. One. OT doesn't matter. You won. Um. Uh, face-offs were uh, 51 49 even I call that even 1% is not as even right uh, the avalanche were 1 for 3 on the power play Preds were 2 for 5 um, penalty minutes were 12 for the avalanche 8 for the Preds uh, 19 hits for the Preds 14 for the avalanche uh, 18 blocks as we said, uh, what was it? Sissons looked like he was banged up because of a block shot uh, from his own teammate, nonetheless. Right. And then you had uh, uh, Comper, who looked to be in severe discomfort off of a, of a Yossi shot. And that's just one of those situations where he, he, he definitely was still moving around and trying to get up, but he got a stinger right on the top of the kneecap. And, you know, though, I mean, I've had things hit me in the knee before. If you're if you're down, it's not easy to straighten that knee at that time. Right, it's gonna take you a few seconds. So I'm wondering if the refs let him go because he was still moving around and trying to get up. Yeah. Um. And and Bor and this is like I say in in the case the other guy, there was another uh, situation where uh, uh, I uh, okay I don't know how to say his name, A U B E Knubel. I don't know. Uh, Nicholas Alub, uh, Ayub Knubel. Um, he got hit by the bench and he was down for about five seconds and they blew the whistle. So, um, uh, you know, um, I guess they evened it up there, I guess, in a way of, yeah. that's not the way you want to win. Right. You know, um, I know that the Avalanche fans were giving them hell for posting the video of the injury on their own Twitter page. Um, I happened to catch that. I said nothing myself. Um, my personal opinion, personal opinion is I don't think you should ever put injuries of an opposing player on your own Twitter. And I wouldn't care whose team it is. Right. Admirals, Preds, Everblades. I'd I'd have said, hey, can we have a little more class here? You know, right. cut that part out of the video editing. You know, a little more. Not not completely classless because you did score a goal. Right. But showing that you took the slow mo video of all of it, which makes it the classless part. You know, there's a right. difference doing fast paced or slow mo and and that's where you really look at it 
Um, Borrow doing his job, nonetheless, blocked the shot, trying to keep his team in the game. Uh, the Avalanche team is a very good hockey team. Um, you know, uh, they made some very big mental errors at one point or another in this game. Giveaways were 12 to 5, Colorado. Um, as we say, as me and John say all the time, no bad turnovers, and they cost Colorado today. Yeah. Um, I think that's the big part. Uh, they uh, McKinnon himself had three of them. Yeah. Um, you know, so just as good as you are, and you can be very good, having giveaways can cost you the game. Right. You know, you scored a goal. Whoop de doo. There's a stat for you, but you, and you got a point because you got to OT, but you didn't get the extra point. You would have got that extra point. You would be sitting at 47, wait, 48 points, and Nashville would be at 49. So you'd be one point out. Right. So I, I, mean, I mean, to be completely unbiased here had it gone the other way you'd have been one step closer to taking over nashville so right. uh, i guess where i'm saying that is um nicholas alub kubel also scored in this game but let's get into the scoring a little bit scoring in the first period at two minutes 32 seconds was tanner janot me and john can't say enough about tanner janot because yeah watching him in milwaukee we knew he was going to be good he went – all right, and I'm going to say this because he entered the NHL draft twice, got passed on twice. Nashville invited him to camp. They liked what they saw, sent him to Milwaukee. Next thing we knew, he was beating the heck out of Dominic Shine. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember that. That was a bloody mess. That was a brutal fight. And – Next thing we know, the Admirals are a whole different team. This mm-hmm. um, He reminds me of Tim Hunter. So for all you hockey enthusiasts, Tim Hunter, go check him out. All righty. Um, good news for the Admirals fans out there. You know, guys that are on our team currently, still pitching in here. Um, Tanner's 12th, leading the NHL in rookie goalie, goal scoring. Yep. That's just nuts. That is just crazy to me. Um, I after the at the end of this video, after we do uh, the breakdown, I will give you guys his season stats because I haven't done it in a while. Um, that was his 12th of the season with an assist from Matt Luff, who was taking in for Yakov Trenin, who's in COVID protocol. Uh, Luff's second assist of the year already, and only a few games. Uh, Sisson's his 12th of the year. Um, then scoring at the 1904 mark, the former Wisconsin Badger, Luke Kunin, his sixth with an assist by you from your captain, Roman Yossi, his 23rd of the season. Um, Yossi and Makar are going to be battling in the central for their representatives for the Norris Trophy. Yep. And it's going to be a fun one to watch, I tell you. Um, watching all the awards will be fun because there's a lot of Preds who are, who are getting talked about. Um, so, you know, you got to give some guys some credit. Um, then scoring in the third at the 521 mark on the power play was Nathan McKinnon, his sixth with an assist from Kale McCarr, his 18th and Nemzum Kadri, his 35th. Um, is Mc- is McKinnon dropping in his point production, or is uh, a little it, bit? It, I I believe a little bit. I mean, because I know. Hang on, let me take a look here, because that that's one of the things that a lot of people don't look at. Um, in his last five games, he has. Let's see, one, six, seven. Eight, eight points, three goals, four assists. So he's become more of a puck distributor compared to goal scorer. Um, normally, he's around 50-50 on it for what I know from him. 
Yeah. Um, the 2013 first overall pick in the NHL draft. Um, so um, McKinnon's so my draft pant really that old. Uh, <laughs> um, then from one, yo, Colorado Avalanche draft pick. To another drafted in 2009, third overall, is Matt Duchesne, scoring yep. his 15th of the season on the power play. Basically, what McKinnon and Duchesne were on the same team for about a year, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember if it was longer. It was at least a year. And you know, it was pretty much a case of McKinnon, whatever you could do, I could do better situation. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. almost like that sometimes between when you see a, your old teammate do something in a game and you go, <laughs> watch this. <laughs> right. You know, it, it, you kind of do still want to stick it to them because they did either A, trade you or let you go. Right. Yeah, you know, or you couldn't come to an agreement on something, or you know, you walked in the off season because you couldn't agree on finance. No, so, fifteenth um, of the season, um, Matt Duchesne's probably on pace for his best season statistically in a while. Um, the assist goes to Carrier, his eleventh, and Yossi is twenty fourth. Also on the Cooning goal, uh, Cousins got an assist. I forgot about that. I apologize, Nick Cousins. Um, statistically, Duchesne is on his best uh, on pace for his best season as a Nashville Predator and as on pace for his best season since the 2017 2018 season, where he scored 59 points. Right. Um, so he's on pace for uh, right now 60, 60 points or so. Uh, we're not even halfway through the season yet. Right. You know, so, you know, he's, he's on that pace for 60 plus if, if he keeps going. Uh, doing very well at 15 goals, uh, 15 goals at this time of our show, uh, 17 assists. Um. Then scoring a beautiful goal, and I give credit where credit is due. Kale McCarr is a highlight real defenseman waiting to happen. Yeah. Uh, his 16th on the season with an assist from uh, Valeri Nichuskin, his seventh, and Sam Gerard, former national prior pick, his 16th. Um, then, then, here we go, then, and we go to OT. Um, this is kind of where I say the mental game because it was a, a mental error. And you're, right. If there was ever a time to not have mental errors, it's overtime. It's an overtime. <laughs> Especially ones that cause you penalties. Right. And to have, how about, hang on. At 18.07, too many men on the ice. At 2.32, too many men on the ice. So you have back-to-back -back penalties called against you for too many men on the ice. Right. That is not what you particularly want to be seeing at this time in the game. Right. Yeah. You know, um, the other thing I wanted to say, it was nice seeing uh, Fabro back, even though in limited capacity, because he's still rehabbing a bit from having COVID. Um, it is nice to see him back on the ice playing, especially it would have been a, it's a great thing because had it not, uh, had it not been for him, I don't know where this team would have been that game, this game, uh, he was a plus one, uh, had one hit to one block and, uh, played, uh, 15 minutes of ice time. Carrier at home. And Yossi all had 20 minutes plus. Yossi almost had a half half the game of ice time. Oh wow. 29 minutes 44 seconds. Almost half of what a full game would be. Right. 
So scarring in OT is Matt Duchesne. And and you know, John loves the Avalanche. It's still one of it's still his favorite team. But Duchesne sticking the dagger in there for uh Colorado. Hey man, I, I I've always liked Duchesne, man. I even got an autographed puck, so <laughs> Um, not to mention you were mad when they traded him. So I was. <laughs> and then when he signed with Nashville in free agency, you're like, okay. <laughs> yep, that works. I'm like, at least it's another team I like. You know, like me with the Sabres. So I'm in your boat on right. Thursday. Right. <laughs> you know, except for I know my team, my my original favorite team is. I'm, I'm not going to say it on camera. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can all know what I'm thinking, though. Uh, the assists on that were your Roman Yossi is 25th of the season and Granlin is 28th. Granlin is on fire this year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to touch on some of these, some of the, the top players for Nashville real quick because we have it in the system that we're going to be doing soon. And I would really like to not have to do this part in that video. So I'm going to do it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. First off, oh wait, that would be helpful. Oh, I screwed up. I forgot the goalies. Don't forget the three stars too. I forgot the goalies and the three stars. <laughs> See, I'm making big mistakes today. This is what happens when you give me time off. <laughs> All right, in that for Colorado was Darcy Kemper, former Minnesota Wild, where most people remember him from. Um, 27 saves on 32 shots with a 0.844 save percentage. In net for the Preds, as we said, Juice was in net, played yet again well. 40 saves on 44 shots with a 0.909 save percentage. Even though you have four against, you still have a plus nine save percentage. That's just yeah. nuts. Three stars of the game are, if I could ever get NHL app to work properly, uh oh there we go second third star of the game was luke coonan with two goals second star of the game was kale mccarr with a goal and two assists of three points and matt duchene with two goals including the game winner and going 100 percent on the face off playing 23 minutes of ice time including five on the power Five minutes, 30 seconds on the power play. I rounded yep. up 28, but yeah. All right, so we talked about Tanner Janot. Tanner Janot in 37 games has 12 goals, 11 assists for 23 points. Is a plus... Uh... So, yeah, he went up one. So, plus six. Has 62 penalty minutes, which would lead all rookies. Has nine fighting majors, which leads all rookies. Right. Or, sorry, seven fighting majors. Seven fighting majors. Um, and has three game-winning goals, including one OT winner. To say that he's having his a great season in his first year, in his last five games, not including tonight, three goals, one assist, he, and in the games he didn't score, he had a fight. Right. Never goes a game without a shot. It's just so impressive of how he uh, approaches the game. Right. Um, Duchesne, another one on on that rip for the year. He has 16 goals, 17 assists, uh, on clip for for 30-plus points. I mean, all right, he has 30-plus points. He has, so he had two to that. He has 33 points on the season already in 32 games, going a point over a point per game. Nice. He is literally at a point per game clip. Mikel Granlin. This is another guy I want to talk about. 
has 35 games played, five goals, 28 assists, 29 now. So he has 34 points in 36 games. Yeah. Just have a year, why don't you? And then if you want to talk why Roman Yoshi should be in the Norris Trophy consideration, 37 points in 35 games going over a point per game, not counting the two assists he had in this game. Right. I think he had more than that, but I may be wrong. All right, let's see here. Yossi, 23, 24, 25. He had three assists in this game alone. Yeah. Wait, did they update it already? Yeah, 25 goal, 25 assists and 37 points in 35 games. That's just nuts. And here's the way to really think about it. He was drafted in the second round, eighth overall by the Preds in 2008. All right. Do you know this man just overtook second place all time in assists for the Preds? Yeah. This also, this Preds team, ANHL, wake up. We're here. We're in the top five of your whole league. Yeah. <laughs> it went from at one point being down and be not playing well to start the year. Right. To going on four five-game win streaks. Four of them. And knocking on wood here, but uh, this team ain't been below uh, 500 since uh, October. Right. Since the month of October ended, they just hit the ground running and have not looked back. Yeah. In there, in the Nashville Predators schedule, Okay, in their last, let's just look at the month of December, all right? They lost to Boston, beat Montreal, beat Detroit, beat the Islanders, beat the Devils. We beat the Rangers 1-0, beat Colorado 5-2, beat Chicago in OT that week, had some games postponed, then lost to Washington, lost to Columbus. That was the last time we lost back-to-back games. Right. But before that, we hadn't lost back-to-back games. Won against Calgary, lost against Edmonton, won against Vancouver, lost against Chicago. We were about a 500 team. Then we started picking it up in November. We beat Dallas on the road, beat St. Louis on the road at OT. Then we beat Arizona at home. Toronto took us to the woodshed. Ontario had uh, Ottawa, uh, Ontario, Ottawa had to postpone. So then we had a four day break, which we were rusty. We go out, get smacked around by Montreal, beat Anaheim, lose to Vegas, beat the Devils, lose to Colorado, and then manhandled um, Columbus. So we have not lost in back to back games like that. And I don't really count back-to-back games. If you have a game in the middle, it's postponed. Right. Which still has yet to be rescheduled to my recollection. So coming up this month, we kind of got a middle-of-the-way schedule. We got Buffalo, uh, Boston, St. Louis, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Detroit, Seattle. We get to go to Seattle. Um, that game will be on ESPN and Hulu. And then we go to Edmonton. Edmonton's been a thorn in our side for a while. And then we get to February, where we play Vancouver, and then we're off for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Well, we play Dallas and uh, Tampa towards the end of the month. And then once you get to April, it's just slam city. Yeah. It's literally a game every other day. Right. 
there's some where we're playing back to back in the West Coast, and me and John, we're going from the East Coast to the West Coast on our sleeping schedule. Right. Because they play Philly and then Toronto, and then they go to Anaheim. <laughs> You're like, yeah, great. And those are weekday games, too. Right. Oh, fun. That's going to be. But, you know, our schedule, nonetheless, of what I was going to get to, you know, I think what we're all really looking forward to, but let's be real, because me and John are going to be paying close attention to that uh, that 24th game against Dallas and that 26th game outside at Nissan Stadium. Those are two really big ones we're going to be paying attention to. Um, the 24th against Dallas um, is, is very going to be very special and near and dear to all Admirals fans' hearts. Preds fans' hearts, and anybody who ever got a chance to say hello to him. <laughs> and that is Pecorine's number retirement. Um, that night, uh, we will be doing a special video just for him. Um, and we're hoping to get that done sometime in the month of February. Um, we will have a special video that we will be doing just for him. Um, so we're still working out the details in that special video, but we're... Yep. We're, we're going to get a special video done um, for him from us uh, that we really want to do. And, and it, it, you know, Pekka is a special person, um, you know, a proud supporter of the Preds 365 program where they help the community. Uh, the Blue Line Buddies, they help the community. Um, Pekka had a huge hand in all of that, still gives back to the community. Um, he's in Nashville right now doing charity work at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. I mean, the man stepped away from the game, but didn't forget what, what the game has given him. So I, I give, you know, he is a true man. He yeah. gives everything he's got to everything he does. And, and I'm so glad that he was, he, he gets the joy of being a father because, you know, hopefully his kid can be a good goalie and Hey, don one of these one day, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hopefully I'm alive to see it too. You know, we all, we never know with COVID these days, we all wish you all the best in health. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to do a quick little thing. Um, I wanted to do because we normally don't get to do this and we have a little spot here. So we're going to do it. Um, I would like to wish my condolences to the families of Betty White and Bob Saget. Um, we've let you guys into our home and you are part of our family through through memories with our family members, whether it was watching Golden Girls with Grandma or <laughs> mm -hmm. or watching Family Matters with your with your fam or not Family Matters, uh, uh, Full House, Full House. I'm sorry, I'm, I got I watched Family Matters earlier. Sorry, Family Matters was a good TV show, but um no full house and, and losing bob saget uh those two families um they were a big part of our childhood me and john particularly growing up um we grew up with them on tv and you know um, right. when we were kids tv was a was a cool down point from playing outside nowadays tv yep. is like, i need my tv <laughs> <laughs> for most kids so you know well Anything, kids, if you really want to know, go play outside in the summertime and, and enjoy fresh air, make friends, do stuff like that. Because guess what? Absolutely. That video game system, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going to create any opportunities for you. But you'll learn how people function if you go outside. Right. You'll learn who the real good people are and who the real bad people are. And unfortunately, there's two sides to that coin. I wish every person was a good person, but... Much no, um, look at me, mental health expert and all. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, I just wanted to put some stuff in here because I've this is some stuff I've really thought about. You know, our our, our the children are our future, and it's really you know just with COVID and everything. I wanted to put a message out there to the younger generations that don't forget what's outside your home. Yeah, I know that COVID's pretty much controlled you being in your home, but please don't forget what's outside your home because guess what? What's in your home will be there tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, and the next day. It's not going anywhere. Um, but what's outside, it may not be there tomorrow. Right. 
and 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 you may miss an opportunity to create a moment in your life that you will never forget and and and, and those are the moments that you will cherish so thank you for watching uh from milwaukee to nashville's uh mental health program we will see you guys uh tomorrow with a new update and some more uh good positive thoughts see ya